All right. So let's do this. Welcome everybody to the new Saturday night solo campaign where I will be running the Death Knight's Squire uh, module in the upper right hand corner available at the Dungeon Masters Guild. Uh, I converted this module, however, I converted this module and its sequel and hopefully all the other sequels that will come from this author BC Beats uh, 5e solo, he's known as 5e solo adventures on DMs Guild. And when I convert these, I, you know, I, I pay attention to how they're converted, but I try not to internalize the story so that I may one day play them myself, uh, which is what I'm going to do now. So I'm just starting a new campaign here. Uh, I've got a couple extensions installed here. I've got the 14 point font ins extension installed. I have the mood lighting, alternate wound colors. I also have uh, let's see, what else do I have for extensions? I, that's probably, oh, the window saver and uh, the simple brown theme. So let's get to it. Oh, I also have my uh, decals here. So let me click on the window saver thing. Let me go right over here to the options and let me put in not my business card, but my logo there. We'll do that. And I am going to open all the rules because as I start the campaign, I am going to build a character using my own All 5e rules. I'm going to use my own character builder, and I'm going to make a random character, and then whatever I roll, I'm going to use it to play the game. So this should be pretty fun. So once those rules open up, I will then go to the library. And... Uh, yep, they're all loaded. Okay, now I'm going to go to the library. And I'm going to go find my random character generator. Random PC generator. I'm going to open that. There it is down there. All right. Uh, first of all, I'm going to give myself all the buttons on the side. I like to have all the buttons. Uh, so story template, random PC generator. Let's do this. Unlock this template. All right. Replace the source in the class background race below, making sure to leave the brackets with the entry appropriate according to this chart. All right, so I'm going to use I'm going to use all of the sources that I can, which would be number nine. So it says replace the source, which is here, leaving the brackets. Okay, so I'm going to copy all of this. Control C. So I'm going to be choosing from the Player's Handbook, Elemental Evil, Sorcos Adventures Guide, Volos, Tomb of Annihilation, and Tortle Package, which is everything that you can have in 5e to this point. So I'm going to replace this. Boom. Okay. Now I'm assuming that you have to have it like that. Okay. Uh, I wrote this as well, the random PC generator. Uh, that's also available on the guild. Uh, okay. Click the Generate button at the bottom and use the new window story entry to create your character. All right, so I'm going to close this, I'm going to close this, and I'm going to close this. I'm going to click Generate. There's the new guy, so I'm going to close this. So here is what I'm going to use to generate my character. Uh, so I'm going to build a character. Brand new guy. And a uh, name. I'm going to name him <laughs> Rob until I come up with a better name. Uh, abilities. Use standard array or you can also use 4d6, drop the lowest. And I'm not liking, well, I don't know, a 15 is pretty good. Or no, a 17 is pretty good on intelligence. But I'm going to use the standard array because what am I playing? A rogue. All right. So I'm going to drag the rogue class in. And, ooh, I'm going to set those skills aside because it's also going to be dependent on my background, which is soldier. 
So now some skills have been chosen for me. So since I already have athletics and I already have intimidation, I'm going to choose four that aren't those. So since I'm playing a rogue, I'm assuming that athletics and acrobatics would be good. So acrobatics, deception, this is a lot of role playing, insight, and I'm going to choose investigation. All right, so we did that. Now I still need to put my I still need to put my things in there, but I'm going to get a Goliath, which means I'm going to get plus two on strength and plus one on con. Okay, so now I can decide what I want to do. So a rogue. Uh, wait, I can just open it up over here. Where's the rogue? Here we go. So a rogue's main skills are supposed to be like what? Dex and charisma? Let's see. Make uh, intelligence your... Okay. So first is dexterity, then intelligence if you want to excel at investigation or charisma if you plan on social deception or... Oh, yes. Yes. I think uh, I'm going to do charisma-based rogue because this is a role-playing scenario. Uh, so, I mean, they'll be combat, obviously, but they'll, this is more role-play as well. And I'm not much into role-playing, as anybody who watches my channel knows, but I'm going to do it. Because it's just me. It's a solo adventure. So, uh, oh, and I, I maybe should have showed that. Uh, the Death Knight. Well, it's in the, yeah, you guys see the cover of it, and it's available on the guild. And I'll put a... Uh, I'll put a link if you you can just search the Death Knight Squire on Dungeon Masters Guild if you want to find this. But uh, when I do the YouTube video, I'll put a link in the chat in the uh, description. All right, so Dex is going to be my highest. So I guess I'm going to have to go 15 there. Charisma is going to be my next highest, so I'm going to go 14 there, and then I'll go 13 in Con, which will make that a 14. And then 12 in strength, which will make that a 14. 10. Oh, I, I've already fucked this up. <laughs> what did it say? It wasn't supposed to be dex. It was supposed to be intelligence. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to go back and start over. So this was a 12. 10, 11, 10, 10, 10. All right. <laughs> I messed it all up. I was supposed to do... Uh, I was supposed to do intelligence, was I? Oh, no, it was dex. Uh, I got all confused. Yeah, Dex and Charisma. Okay, so Dex is going to be the highest. So Dex is going to be 15. Charisma should be next highest, which will be 14. Then I'll put the 13 in Con, which will make that a 14. I'll put the 12 in Strength, which will make that a 14 as well. And then the 10 there and the 8 in Wisdom. I'll be, I'll just be really kind of stupid and not smart. All right, that'll be good. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. All right, languages. Three extra random languages you choose from if needed. And there they are. So let me go over to my skills, or sorry, to my abilities. And languages, I have common, giant, and then I have these other three. So draconic. I have orc. And I have Gnomish. This is really cool, This, this, uh, if I do say so myself. Okay, inventory. Did I, have I, did I skip anything? No. Okay, so inventory. Equipment chosen from the class and background. Links above. Okay, so the rogue class and the soldier is where I'm going to get my equipment from. So let's go down and see what I've got in each of these here. Uh, do, 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 equipment, 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 equipment. Here we go. Equipment right here. And there's the links to the stuff. Okay, so I get a rapier or a short sword. A short sword, a quiver, or a short sword. I think I'm going to do two. Oh, no, I better not do that. If I take two short swords, then I'll, I won't have any ranged... Oh, that's bad. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, 
Let's see, a rapier and a short sword. Are they both? Are they both light? I believe I've played this game for quite some time. I should know the answer to that. Let's go down to a rapier is finesse, and a short sword is light. I believe. Yeah. So if I want to fight with two, I sh I need to take. They both have to be light. So. What are the chances I'm going to pick up another weapon as a short sword? Okay, fine. I'm just going to take a short sword and, ta and chance it. So I'm going to chance it. And so I'm going to take a short sword. Boom. And then a short bow and a quiver of 20 arrows. Okay. So short bow is here. And then... I'm going to take, I don't need the weapons anymore for a second. I'm going to go to the adventuring gear and find 20 arrows, boom, and a quiver. There's a quiver. All right, and then a burglar's pack, a dungeoneer's pack, or an explorer's pack. I'm going to go with the explorer's pack because I don't know why, but I am. So explorer's pack. Drag that over. Boom. Uh, leather armor, two daggers, and thieves' tools. Excellent. So I'm going to go to armor, get leather. And I'm going to get thieves' tools from adventuring gear and two daggers from weapons. So thieves' tools. What? That's not on there. That's on uh, tools. Duh. So Thieves Tools. All right, now before I forget, I'm going to go right here to my library. I'm going to go to Modules, and I'm going to get Tools. Yes, I have a, I have a, by Remedies, I have a thing that I got from the Dungeon Masters Guild called Tool Proficiencies as Skills. So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to go right over here to Skills. Boom. And now on my Character Sheet... I will be able to, on my Skills tab, actually already have, instead of having to type this and make it, boom, Thieves Tools right there. Add it in. All right, and I'm going to say I'm proficient in that, and it is dex-based, so there you go. All right, back to what we were doing. Uh, leather armor, two daggers. I need two daggers, so that's the weapon list. And I'm going to get two daggers. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little cheating trick here. I'm going to drag a dagger on, and I'm going to rename that dagger offhand. Right? And then I'm going to drag another dagger on. So that on my actions tab, I have dagger... Uh, I have two... Oh, I didn't rename them, but one of them is offhand. And one of them is thrown. Okay, so I'm going to remove this thrown one. And then I'm going to put two for my ammo. Short bow, might as well do 20 there. And then dagger offhand. And then I'm going to, of course, change that to no modifier. Because on your offhand weapon, you do not get your modifier. Okay, so back on track. Okay, leather armor, two daggers, and thief tools. Okay, good. So I have actually already got everything from the class. Now let's go to the background, and I bet I get a, a little more equipment here. All right, now also I myself wrote a background equipment because a lot the PHP usually doesn't have a lot of this stuff. So now let's go over here, and let's open up the the items and let's go to the thing and we're going to narrow down uh oh wh why isn't it what the hell happened isn't it there background proficient oh no no I opened the wrong one I opened the wrong one everybody I opened the background proficient because I saw the word background and got excited so let's go back and try that again 
background equipment is what I want. Uh, what is that called? Hello. Oh, items. What is it called? I maybe don't remember the name of it. Oh. Oh, is it? It's not trinkets, is it? Trinkets table. No, that can't be it. What, what did I call that? Uh, you know what? I bet you it might be true that I have the module missing out of my... Um, that would be a sad story for me. Uh, I usually DM, so I don't make characters that often. So let's find out what trinkets is. Not tables. Everybody calm down. Everybody just relax. <laughs> Alright, let's go to trinkets. Oh yeah, that is it. Okay, you know, that, that is it. It's called Trinkets Table. Because a lot of times uh, in the background you have crap that they tell you. Okay, an insignia rank. So let's find that. I-N-S. A rank insignia from a lost... Uh, wait a minute. Let's, let's just read these now. An insignia of rank... Well, it's not quite called that, but rank. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll, we'll say that's close enough. So rank, insignia from a lost legionnaire. So I'll go back to my inventory and put that on there. That's close enough. Uh, a trophy taken from a fallen enemy. And why I closed that, I'll never know now. I should open that back up. So, trophy. Well, now, oh, no, no, I'm totally wrong, you guys. I'm totally, totally wrong. This is trinkets and not uh, what I want. So, I totally have screwed myself here. That's all right. Mistakes have been made. Let's just get rid of that. So, I actually need to find... Uh, let me just pop over and find out if that module is, in fact, just not in there. Um, first of all, if I get the get the name of it. Uh, so stand by, everybody, while I figure out this crap. All right. Background... Equipment is what it should be called. Yeah. Fantasy Grounds 5e background equipment items. That's exactly what the, what it's called. So I just don't have it in my list. So let me go over here and find out just why the fuck don't I have it in my list. It is just not there. Okay, fine. So I must have put it... Haha. <laughs> Super funny. Okay, well, uh, I will download it from the DMs Guild and put it in there then. Why don't I just do that? Uh, oh, actually, you know what? Instead of doing that, I will... Uh, oh, man, I, I just screwed myself. Okay, I'm going to open another Fantasy Grounds here. Here, let me let me change the screen so you guys can see what I'm doing. Because uh, realize you're just looking at the game table. So there we go. So now, now you guys can see what I'm doing here. All right. So, no, nope, I'm not downloading that from the DMs Guild. Instead, I am opening another instance of Fantasy Grounds. And before I do that, I have to change a file from my campaigns and archives. I have to bring forward... The background equipment and put it in the campaigns file. And now I can open this. Load campaign, background equipment. Yep, load it. Oh, it's all happening, everybody. And as soon as this loads, I'll just export it, and then I'll have the module in the file, and then I can get it. Oh, but as it turns out, when you put a module... Oh my god, there's so much to doing this. I'm going to have to shut this down and reopen it. 
But luckily I have Window Saver, everybody, so I won't get screwed. Uh, don't need this anymore. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to export this. Which will put the module in my modules folder. And then when I open back up the game, I can go look at it and get it. And I would have saved myself a bunch of time if I didn't have to go through this. But okay, exported, good. Don't need this anymore. But I do need the other one. So load campaign, game, Death Knight Squire, load it. This one we can close. All right, now we should be back on track. Back on track, everybody. And then I'll switch to the actual real screen here, what we're supposed to have. There we go. All right, back on track. Back on track. I'm super excited to play this. If I can ever get to it. All right. So I'm not going to show that every time. I am going to get my windows back. Boom. Yeah, look at that shit. All right. So I was doing... Okay, so now if I go to the library, I should actually be able to find that thing and open it up. Background. There it is. We don't need this trinkets thing. Close that. Open this. Okay. Now we're all... Now everybody can just relax. I don't know why that module wasn't in my thing, but I'm glad I noticed it wasn't. So I'm going to go to items. Now we're talking... So I'm going to go to background equipment items. Here they all are. So before, what I was looking for is rank insignia. There it is. So I'm going to go to inventory. Slap that bad boy on there. Okay. What else? Uh, rank insignia, a trophy taken from a fallen. All right. Let's trophy fallen enemy right there. Put that on there. See, it's all done for you. Don't have to type it all. As long as you have the module in there. A set of bone dice or a deck of cards. I think I'm going to go for the bone dice. Now that's in the that's in the regular equipment. Bone dice, I think it is. Oh, wait, do I have bone dice in here? B-O-N. No, okay, it's in the regular equipment. Everybody get down here. Bone dice. Okay, that's an adventuring gear. B-O-N dice. What? Where's dice? Oh, it's in tools, maybe. Damn it, I can never... I can never keep the thing straight between tools and... Dice set. Oh, it's just dice set? Okay, fine. I'll take the dice set. Yeah, see, I don't like the way that it labels stuff. It should be exact, actually. So there's weighted dice over there, but no, I don't need that. Okay, so... Um, a set of common clothes, that is also going to be an adventuring gear, and a belt pouch. So, common clothes, belt pouch, which is actually just called pouch, and I don't think, yeah, alright, pouch, and I think we're going to be out of here, out of these tables, I think that's it except the money. Yep, okay, close this, and I give myself 10 gold pieces, 10 GP. All right, now we're out of that one. All right, let's keep going. So I did the languages, I did the equipment. So now, oh, my gender. Uh, my gender is going to be male... My age, I'm a Goliath. So let's check out. I always like to start off as the equivalent of a 20-year-old human. So let's find out what the deal is with Goliath ages. Oh, and here, I'll do a... I'll do a Goliath name. Uh, uh, I'll do Eglath... Eglath Bear, bear Killer. Eglath... Bear killer, and put in my portrait as the Goliath. 
which is no, I don't think Xanathar's I can't use Xanathar's I guess I'll, I'll do the uh Goliath, there we go, let's take that guy. All right. Uh, oh yeah, and, and then I didn't find out the answer to my question, which was, what, not Rogue. I don't want Rogue, everybody. Goliath is age comparable to humans. Okay, so I'm going to make him 20. Uh, first level, uh, age 20. And then size, I'll make him seven and a half feet tall and 310 pounds, just right in the middle. Seven foot six, 310. All right. Good. Uh, alignment and deity, I'm not going to really, well, maybe that's going to come up. So I'm going to make him chaotic, chaotic neutral. And his deity, I'm going to make him an atheist unless that comes up and I need to choose. So based on race and choice, personality and background, let's see. Oh, alignment. Yeah, okay, good. So this is just the thing that tells you what's going on with it. So, actually, I'm going to use the background ideals and flaws and all that, and I'm just going to roll those randomly. Personality traits, links, bonds, flaws, chosen from background. Okay, so background is soldier. He is going to uh, open up all these tables, and I'm going to roll... A random one off each one. And whatever I get is what I get. All right. So my trait is I, uh, I'm i always polite and respectful. Uh, my ideal is for the greater good. My honor is my life. And my flaw is I obey the law even if... You know what? I'm going to have to change this to lawful good, actually. I'm going to kind of have to play a lawful good guy. A lawful good rogue. <laughs> All right. I guess I won't do that, be doing that much stealing. Uh, what happened to my flaw? It didn't get in there? I obey the law, even if it, here it is right here. Okay. There we go. All right. Moving on. Uh, actions tab. Spells chosen by player. Okay. I don't. All right. So I'm actually done with this window. And so now I can go through the character and what don't I have done? I, everything is done up here. Skills are chosen. Abilities. Okay, so I need to code the abilities, uh, which, of course, we all know uh, I have modules for that. So let's do it. As a matter of fact, let's go to the library. Let's open all the coding modules. So I'm going to open... I don't have spells, so I'm going to open class. I'm going to open... I don't have feats. I'm going to open race so race traits okay i should have everything i need there let's go over to the spells list because those of you that know about my coding packages they're all on the spells list even though they're not spells that's where they are so you can drag them over to the actions tab and make them work so let's open up all this shit expertise doop 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 all right light armor i have leather we have already got the dice set for there we've already got the thieves tools for there Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to add a skill. Uh, dice sets. Well, let's do that. D-I... 
So arguably the dice set could be, I'm going to say that's dexterity, but it could arguably be, be charisma or anything else. I, I think it's going to be dependent on the situation. So we'll leave that for now. All right, stones endurance. Is that a thing? Stones endurance. It is a thing, as a matter of fact. So I'm going to drag that right over here and change the category from spells to Goliath. Then when I do that, I'm just going to trim this down over here, and there's the codes I need for that. Uh, all right, close it. I have powerful build. Is that a thing? Powerful. Oh, no, you count as one size larger when determining your carrying. Okay, so that's not going to... I don't need a code for that. Uh, natural athlete, you have proficiency in the athletic skill, which it's already given me. Boom. Mountain born, you're acclimated to a high altitude. You have naturally adapted. I wonder if mountain born has... No. Okay, so that just is kind of a role playing. Uh, if I get into cold climates... I am naturally adaptive, so I don't suffer any disadvantages and all that kind of stuff. Thieves can't. That is a language, which I don't believe is listed on the ability, so I will add that. All right. Thieves can't. Yes, they can. Sneak attack. I know that's a thing. Sneak attack for the rogue. So I'm going to go down here and drop that down, and I'm going to change the category from Spells to Rogue. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim this right over here. Boom, 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 like that. That's ready to go. Military Rank, that is just a fluff role-playing thing. Expertise. Expertise is... Oh... Choose two of your skill proficiencies or one of your skill proficiencies and your proficiency with Thieves tools, and your proficiency bonus is doubled. Yes. Yes is yes and in, yes indeed. Uh, so I am going to choose Thieves, and I'm also going to choose... I'm going to choose Acrobatics. Yeah, that's right. And that's it. Okay, I think my guy's ready to go. This is pretty exciting. Okay, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I've done everything. So we are ready to rock and roll, everybody. All right, get rid of the spells category. Boom. Okay, so let's open up the combat tracker. Let's put me in. And let's just put that right up here at the top like that. Get my character sheet over here like this. And let's open the module and get cracking. It only took me 40 minutes to get going. Oh, I, yeah, did I even open the module? No, I haven't. Modules. Death Knight Squire. There it is. Open it. All right. Let's get the story up and get cracking. So, sequel to the Death Knight Squire is here. Okay, good. So people know that in case they play it. All right, 5 e uh, here's the cover. Very good. I don't know why that's shaped like that. That's kind of weird. Okay, there we go. Uh, Paul Bill Paul Bimler is the is the guy's name, but he uh, he goes by 5e Solo Adventures and also BC Beats. Uh, here's all the credits and that stuff. When playing this adventure as a solo, players will find story entries having items rather than parcels. Also, NPCs will be presented as links rather than encounters. This is for easier manipulation of elements pertaining to the story. You will just drag the NPCs into the combat tracker directly. When treasures refer to GPSP, etc., just add those manually to your PC sheet. It's easier than quicker than using parcels. Yes, that is true. Uh, all right. Introduction. Yeah, here we go. This is a different kind of module. It is a solo adventure designed for use of the 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons rules. It is designed for a player who cannot find a group with a dungeon master, but is dying to play D&D nonetheless. Given the current resurgence of the game, there are quite a few things a player's 
Uh, quite a few of these players around who, due to ge geography or just poor luck, are unable to indulge their newfound passion. This game is written for them, and for those who would like a little adventure in between the regular sessions with the dungeon master, and it is also written for those. It is also written for those poor DMs like myself who never get a chance to play a PC. <laughs> a handful of solo adventures were released for the first and second editions of the game, such as Lathan's Gold, Rage of Rakasta, Ghost of Lion Castle, and a few others of varying quality. The original Red Basic box also included a solo adventure, which I, and I'm sure many others, have found fond memories of playing through. I remember doing that. Uh, however, I personally have not seen many solo adventures for 5e, apart from a few floating around uh, about online. Time to do something about that. This adventure is set in the Forgotten Realms, but could easily be adapted to any world. If you do not have access to the Dungeons and Dragons books, like Player's Handbook, there is a handy PDF that Wizards of Coast have kindly put out, and it covers the basic rules that can be found at this web address. All right. Uh, title pages. Important note. Don't look at the maps until you are specifically directed to. You will only be spoiling the surprise and gameplay for yourself. Yeah, we don't want to do that. No spoiler. Hashtag spoilers. This adventure is played using two booklets. The adventure booklet, which contains the name and the maps booklet. Yeah, except for in Fantasy Grounds, it's already kind of all... It's all one. So, art book. Oh, my God. Look at that. Uh, you will need to print the maps booklet. Okay, again, Fantasy Grounds. Not, doesn't, that doesn't really apply. You may want to print out the adventure booklet, this one, as well as, okay. Note, when you access the PDF adventure booklet on a device, you will have to access the active links, removing the need to search through any of the pages. Okay, yes, again, uh, that is PDF kind of only. Uh, JPG files, okay. You can drop these straight into an application such as, oh my god, roll 20. I should change that to Fantasy Grounds. I can't believe I didn't do that. Placing and, oh, that's very bad, roll 20. Uh, if you are a DM and want to run this adventure with multiple PCs, contact me through the DMs Guild. Leave a comment on this products page and I will supply you with the complete map. Oh, I see. That's interesting. Uh, as stated above, the map booklet contains sections of the adventure map called title tile pages revealed as you move through your adventure. Also, at the back of this booklet are... Mm -hmm. Okay, when directed, you move a token onto the tile page, then follow directions given. By, okay, good, got it. You may find the maps useful for play, or you may not, but they do provide a handy visual reference for the adventure, as well as also allowing you to keep track of your place. When the maps, with the maps, it is easier for you to find place once again if you lose track of what you're doing. Okay. Note, as a rule, when you are reading entries in the adventure booklet, try to avoid looking at other entries as much as possible. Tokens. Find something to function as a PC token. In Fantasy Grounds, we have that already covered. Uh, game tokens, coins, dice, anything with a bit of weight. Okay, standard actions. On a tile page, you can move, search for traps, investigate, heal. You don't need to wait to be directed to do this if you have the ability or any other number of options given. Instructions on the tile page will direct you to certain entries in the adventure booklet. Uh, example given, go to traps. Check traps. And from there, you may be directed to further entries. Eventually, you'll be directed back to the tile page and from there on to connecting maps. Don't worry too much about learning all that now. It'll quickly become clear as you start playing. Okay. Movement. Standard rules regarding movement only apply to combat in this adventure. During a combat, you can move according to your speed for the tactical advantage. Otherwise, follow directions given on the tile pages. Each square of the tile page grid measures five feet. As far as a monster movement is concerned, you will have to move monster tokens. Unless otherwise stated, all enemies will come at you via the shortest route and attack. Moving between maps. At the edge of each of the tile pages, numbers and arrows which indicate what tile pages connect to the one you're on. When you reach the edge of a tile page, you can move into the next map as indicated. In this way, you move through the adventure. Okay. D100 chance rolls. Occasionally, you will be directed to make a D100 roll a chance roll. It is tiled. It is titled thus because there is a chance nothing will happen. However, if something does happen, it will not simply be some random encounter from a table. The encounter will be pertinent to the adventure entwined in the plot and may also provide you with uh, clues or items 
that could help you later in the venture. I'm using this system as it leaves things nice and open and provides a good level of variety. Green dots and other items on the page. Occasionally you will see an item on the page like an archway or a house or a pile of rocks and you may move to investigate those. Instructions will be given on that tile page as to how to do that. At other times you may see a translucent green dot on the page at the intersections of the tiles. Sometimes these will contain encounters, good or bad, and other times they will not. Interesting. This is very interesting everybody. Uh, so you will never know whether to wait. So you will never know whether to avoid the adjoining squares or go through them. Avoiding them might mean you run the chance of missing out on vital clues or items, or it could mean that you avoid the mind flare lurking just out of sight. Oh my God, is there a mind flare? I'm very scared. Or it might mean nothing. The dots will sometimes signify nothing at all. They are placed to add the element of unknown to the game. Combat. Run a combat as you would run a normal game, but you play the part of both the DM and the player. You will need to roll dice, saving throws, and all other appropriate rules for yourself and any monsters. When monsters' special attacks come into play, this will be included in, this, in the narrated text. Sometimes you will be asked to roll a die and spawn the monsters that many spaces from you. If you cannot move them that many spaces due to the grid spaces available, then just move them as far as you can, as far as the edge of the map that you are on. Death saves. House rule. There are no death saves in this adventure, unfortunately. If you are playing with a friend, you should double monster numbers if you are doing this. Then death saves are allowed, as an extra character can cover you while you are down. If you die, which is a possibility, you'll just have to roll up another PC and try again. Oh, fuck! Spellcasting. I have given options throughout the adventure for casting spells. Example given. Do you know the detect magic you should use this okay i see what they're doing if you are playing a mage think about what spells you'd be useful for a solo adventure usually however spell casting will mainly be used in combat sacred flame magic missile and you will choose when to employ it without waiting to be prompted for the next text entry so feel free to cast spells even if the text does not call for it use common sense for example if you want to cast feather fall to prevent damage but the option is not given still go ahead and cast it Avoiding the damage. Even if the options are not given, if you think a spell is appropriate for the situation and the conditions are met, then go with it. Ask the question, what would you, what would a DM do? Also, keep track of your spell slots. Resting and healing. Opportunities will be given to rest on certain tile pages. Follow the normal rules for resting and recovering HD. If you have healing abilities, lay on hands, good berry, cure wounds, etc. Use those when you would as appropriate following the normal 5e rules skills skill checks are will be asked for when appropriate dark vision if you are playing uh oh hello do i have dark vision i don't think so does goliath have dark vision no damn it if you are playing a character without dark vision then you will need torches let's say you buy these in oral bar your first port of call however when you are in combat situations in dark places you will not be able to wield a two-handed weapon or a shield and a weapon simultaneously and you will not be able to use two-handed fighting unless the space is illuminated in some way Ooh, yes outside there are always be a small amount of light so when you are entering dark spaces it's presumed you are always kindling a torch otherwise entering and encountering scenarios is basically impossible this rule is circumvented if you happen to find some aid to vision within the adventure. Advantage. Be honest with yourself when you're awarding advantage to yourself or your opponents. Example, if you're a ranger with a favored terrain, a forest, and you roll a stealth while in the forest, you can award yourself advantage. Or if you are making an attack roll for an orc who has trapped you in a net, then roll for the orc with advantage. Ask yourself, what would a DM do? Honesty and fairness. In order to give yourself a great challenging game, the author assumes that you will play honestly and fairly. This means letting the dice fall where they may, keeping track of spell slots, etc., etc. Running monsters true form. True to form. You're really only cheating yourself if you don't. Checking for traps. If you fail a trap check, obviously you may not try again on that tile page. Your PC does not know you didn't make the roll. Move on with the rest of the tile page instructions. Revisiting tile pages. If you are returning to a tile page, use common sense. If you have already checked for traps and or have already triggered a trap, you won't fall for it again. Your D100 chance 
roll is changed as well. In order to even make a D100 chance roll on the tile page, if you're returning to, you must roll a D6. One through five means you previously, your previous passage has been noticed and creatures have moved to other parts of the forest now. And any items that have already been picked up, if you roll a D6, then you may make a, a one D100 chance on the roll, usually contained within the paragraph that starts when you are ready. Other issues. What would happen? Oh, here it is. Other issues. Any other issues where you are not sure of the judgment or how you should play it, just exercise common sense and ask yourself. Damn. That's the Death Knight. That's probably the bad enemy that I'm going to have to kill. Cool. What would a DM do? <laughs> this should be your guide when in doubt. Journal and mapping. A good idea is noting down clues and information that you think might come in handy later on. And they are, they are there. Clues and important bits of information are prepared throughout the adventure. Sorry, pe peppered throughout the adventure. So the more you are paying attention, the higher chance you will succeed in this mission. You could also map your progress using graph paper, which will add to your chances of success. One grid is equal to five feet. Uh, I don't see myself doing that. Uh, multiplayer and DM play. This adventure could easily be played by two characters without a DM. One player would read the entries and you'd simply double the amount of monsters in each encounter. A DM could also run this campaign by reading the entries to the players and running the combat on all monsters. Uh, class feats and abilities. Obviously in D&D, classes have special abilities. A cleric's turn undead, a paladin's divine sense, and so on. Where possible, I've tried to work these into the story and you should feel free to bring those into combat and other situations. Uh, when called for. If there's undead nearby, the text might read, Are you a paladin? If so, go to here. If Divine Sense... Okay, I have also included many options for spell casting. For example, I might say, Do you know the spell Prestidigitation? If so, you can cast it by going to Entry Illusion. So when creating your cleric, sorcerer, druid, or mage, give some thought to what spells might be useful. Character creation. Please create a level 2 character... Aha! I gotta level my guy up. All right. Let's go to my guy. He's gotta go to level two. And bam. And now, what happened when I did that? He got cunning action. So I need to go and get cunning action. And I don't think... Yeah, that's not a thing. That's just a thing I can do. There's no codes for it. That's where I can take a bonus action and either dash, disengage, or hide. Excellent. Excellent. Very excellent. Okay, he's level 2 now. Uh, in addition... Let's say you've already completed one quest and received 150 gold to spend on whatever they want, which they did straight after that quest. Consult player's handbook, standard D&D armor, weapons, and equipments list. Okay, so I get to buy stuff, and I now have, instead of 10 gold, I have 160 gold. Yeah, so I'm buying a healing potion for sure, I know that. Always go adventuring with at least a healing potion. For ability scores, choose between rolling and point by. I personally prefer point by as it gives a little more control, but I'm leaving that call up to you. During playtesting, some players found that they completed the quest successfully on the first run. Others took two or three attempts to complete it. It is definitely replayable, but by no means designed to be an easy quest. So feel free to replay it as many times as you want, using different PCs and taking different routes. I am envisioning this series being sequential and going for a while, so your story will be formed with these adventures, but please do come up with a compelling backstory and background for your character as well, just because it's fun. And it helps you enjoy the adventure. At the end of this, you will progress to level 3 if you survive, ready for the next solo adventure, which I'm already in the process of writing. And by the way, that's done. Uh, I'm not going to put restrictions on race or class. Go with whatever you're feeling. But keep in mind that this adventure is designed to be balanced with PHP plus one characters. In other words, use the player's handbook if you like, and then one other source to create. That one other source can be Volos, Elemental Evil, Sword Coast, but not Unearthed Arcana. 
<laughs> Good. If you're new to D&D, just stick with creating a character from Player's Handbook as it already contains numerous options. With that all of the way, let's get to the adventure. Oh, snap. All right. The year is 1349 DR in the month of deep winter. You have been on the road for nearly two months now, and snow hangs thick in the trees as you make your way towards the town of Oral Bar at the foot of the Great Peak Mountains. The Great Peaks are known throughout Faerun for their silver and iron mines, but it is a different type of metal that brought you here, gold. While you were here in Neverwinter, you overheard rumors of a large hoard of treasure within a goblin Treasure within an abandoned goblin keep. Even tavern rumors prove to be fruitful sometimes. And having been without a purpose for some months, you departed immediately to the Grey Vale. When you reach Orovar, the air is brisk and town is busy. Carts carry all manner of goods, timber, wool bales, grain, and animals from the surrounding country. Some of these goods would be bound for Waterdeep or Neverwinter, others for their nearby city of Loudwater. Hungry and thirsty after many days on the road, you enter the first tavern you see, the Woodman's Retreat, and satisfy your cravings. Bread, cheese, and a hot mulled wine. Ooh, that reminds me, I'm thirsty. Hot mulled wine. Do the trick nicely. You then inquire from the barkeep about accommodation. Your bones ache and the rest is essential. Oh no, and rest is essential. The mountains can wait one or two more days while you rest up and replenish your supplies in town. The barkeep tells you that a very respectable inn, the Silver Flask, is just nearby. Toting your backpack, you walk down the street to the Silver Flask and pay for a room. The innkeep is a jolly woman who is glad to have your business, and she lights a cozy fire in your room. Yeah, you, uh, you gonna stay a while, or what's up? You bathe. Oh, snap. Does she bathe me? What happens? In, and lie down in the rest and the soon fall into a deep sleep. Ah, damn. Uh, uh, it's been a while since you travel, since your travel hardened self has had a clean sheets and a roof overhead. So there's sheets. Okay. You are awoken later that night by a noise from the next room. Uh oh, here we go already. You can hear a woman openly sobbing on the other side of the wall. The sound, so is she sobbing though? Is she sobbing really? Or is something happening? Uh, the sound of gut wrenching. Every now and then, a male voice says something. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. If it's trying to comfort her, you tolerate this for a while, but eventually it becomes evident that sleep is going to be impossible, and you walk out in the hallway and knock on the door to the room next to yours. An elderly man answers. He is dressed finely like a member of the aristocracy, but sports a nasty black eye and gash across his cheek. In the background, a woman, so richly dressed, also richly dressed, sits in the chair by the fire, her face buried in her hands. Yes, what is it? The elderly gentleman asks. You straighten yourself up, peering into the room. I was wondering what all the noise was about, you say. Although, now, you don't feel so quite annoyed. I could hear the crying from next door. I was wondering... You say gruffly, not used to dealing with aristocrats, if there's anything I can do to help with. Help you with perhaps then we can get some rest at this the woman looks up and sees you you probably look a fright after all those weeks on the road ungroomed hair disheveled traveled worn clothes but you've had a bath so at least you don't smell bad <laughs> however your type has an air about them you've seen a fight or two and know how to handle yourself in most situations you're what's known in these parts as the adventuring type. Such types generally know how to get things done, things that others might shy away from. Show our guest in, Elric, the woman says weakly, drying her tears with a silk handkerchief. Ooh, there's a dragon. Uh, the Mysterious Knight. Oh, snap! There's a mistake. The book and candle art is not linked. Why? What? How did that get past anybody? Let's go to images and see if book and candle is even here. Mm -mm 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 -
Man, that should have been linked there. All right, I'm going to have to fix that. Oh, well, first of all, what I'll do is I'll make a note. Because, yeah, any errors I find, I'll just go fix them on the DMs Guild right away. Nobody emailed me about that error, so let's go to notes. Because I might have to make notes about the adventure anyway. So where the hell is notes in here? Isn't there a note? Oh, here it is. No, that's spells. Where the hell is notes? Quests, encounters, parcels, races, spells, and library. Oh, yeah, it's up here. Notes. Okay. So let's make a note. One note will be errors to correct, I guess. And then entry 00075, uh, art not linked, book, candle. All right. All right. You are, you are shown to a chair. For some reason, this old couple who introduced themselves as Lord and Lady Brumont welcome your presence, if only as a distraction from... The grief they seem consumed by. We arrived here late last night, Lady Brumont begins. Elric is so busy these days, so we thought we would bring ourselves out to Orobar for a little holiday. Our son, he's so fond of the mountains, uh, loves all the stories. Well, he's our grandson, really. The son of our daughter who died some years ago. He is all we have left, and we call him our son, Lady Brumont begins, sobbing once more. Elric Brumont picks up the thread. Long story short, my friend, we were accosted on the highway. We were passing along a lonely stretch of reed when he appeared. I'm going to say that's supposed to be road. See, now I have to go... <laughs> now I have to go to the original PDF... And, well, yeah, how about I do that? Uh, I'll, I'll take you guys along with me here to the original PDF. Uh, boom, right here. So I'm going to take you guys along. Let's see. Let me go to my documents. Let me go to 5e Solo Adventures. Death Knight Squire. Open up the PDF. And search for Brumont. All right. Let's go back up to the top and try that. Uh, where is it? They were there longer, I have crossed it, and they were passing lonely. Stretch of read. It does say read. So as a converter and not an author, I cannot change. If that's supposed to say road, then I have to just leave it, because I'm going to have to just assume that's what he meant. He is an uh, English guy, the author, I think. So maybe, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to check and make sure I wasn't crazy. Because uh, it was copy and paste anyway. I don't really, I don't really type it, so I... Whatever's in there is what's in there. All right, back to the thing. All right, here we go. I'm going to assume that means road. Uh, a lonely stretch of road when he appeared from nowhere. A knight, a towering brute of a man, all clad in armor. Lord Eric points to his face. Did this to me. Knocked me out cold. Then he grabbed our boy, threw him over a horse, and bolted without a word. What the fuck? Hmm. You say mulling over this information. Did he seem familiar this night? Elric shakes his head. I know what you're thinking. Wealthy aristocrat on holiday from Loudwater. Someone must have known we were coming here and seized the opportunity. It's true. I am what you would call a public figure. It is well known, in Loudwater at least. But I am no wealthy man. Oh no, that I am a wealthy man. But no, this night wasn't was something else. We didn't see his face. It was hidden by a great metal visor. A towering warrior he was a hulk of a man lady brumont speaks again and he kidnapped our poor little derrick abducted him just ripped him out of our grasp what did you do then you ask we came straight to oral bar lady brumont says we went to the captain of the guard but he he a thoroughly incompetent fool lord lord Brumont growls. 
said his knight was a ghost and he'd chosen Derek as his squire and that there was nothing we could do about it. Said Derek wasn't the first, called him the Death Knight. You can just imagine what a comfort that was to us. They say the knight lives in the wood nearby, Lady Brumont says airily, as if in a walking dream. Weathercoat wood, isn't it, dear? The old man grits his teeth, staring into the fire, and punches his palm. Ghost my arse! <laughs> he snarls through gritted teeth. That knight looked real enough to me. He's a lunatic, nothing more. A lunatic who kidnaps young boys. And when I find the blackguard, by the gods, he will pay. Or will he pay? Uh, you can't help thinking that Lord Brumont is a bit out of his depth here. You doubt... You don't doubt his resolve, but he looks as though his days of conquest are well behind him. You feel for this poor old couple. While not usually associating with the wealthy, you do know that you have something to offer and you're never one to shy away from a good adventure, especially when the chance of a reward is on the table. I can find your boy, you hear yourself saying. The woman looks up and a new hope begins to shine from her eyes. Oh God, she says, her voice quivering. Uh, quavering, actually. We'll give you anything, anything. The old man is a little more practical. If I was a few decades younger, I'd be out there myself. I saw action in the Battle of Tangle Fork when we freed the veil from Wrench Rule. You nod ap appreciatively. Uh, that battle happened about 30 years ago and was said to be fierce. You are not surprised. Elric Brumont definitely carries himself like an old veteran. Uh, I can't put my sword forward anymore, but I can offer you gold, my friend. 2,000 pieces of it, to be exact. Oh, snap. Go to the first entry, Adventure Begins. All right. Oh... Is that me? Adventure begins. All right. Excellent. At dawn the next day, following the few scraps of information you have, you saddle your horse and ride to the outskirts of town. The townsfolk pay you little mind as you go by, casting your occasional glance. The journey to Weathercoat Wood lies due east, but it is no short ride. The captain of the guard tells you that the Death Knight has always been seen in such a small patch of wood that juts out from the western side of the weather coat, like a warts like a wart on a giant's nose. By midday you reach the sign which tells you that you have another fifteen miles to go. You should make it there by nightfall. Not far past the sign is a small inn and tavern. The old man sits in a chair in the afternoon sun and raises a tankard of ale as you pass. <laughs> a tankard of ale for oh there's the sign for the tavern. Awesome. All right. Uh, last drink for many miles, the old man calls out to you. Come sit. I'll buy you an ale. Hint. Hover over the choices and click to navigate your section. Oh, yeah, that's the that's in the PDF. Do you accept the old man's invitation? Or if you're mindful of the time and choosing to ride on, go. Okay. Ooh, oh, my God. It's my first decision. I am going to... Maybe this guy might know something. I'm going to I'm going to go for a brewski. You tie your horse up in the tavern's porch and join the old man who directs a young boy to bring you a frothing tankard of ale. The boy also brings a, uh, some stew for you to eat. There's my brewski. All right. <laughs> what brings you out this way? The old man asks eventually. Do you tell him of your quest? If you choose to simply replenish yourself and be on your way... Alright, I'm going to tell the guy what I'm doing. You find yourself telling the old man about your quest and find the mysterious knight and return Derek Brumont to his grandparents. The old man nods solemnly. The death knight, he says quietly, and leans forward in his chair. Local legend, they say, but, uh... What, you ask? He straightens up, looking you straight in the eye. It's no legend! He says firmly, I was a boy when they hung him from the red tree in the weather coat wood. The old man goes on to tell you the story. The man who would become the Death Knight was once a good man who came from a village in the far south. After his wife died from the pox, 
He left his village, taking his only son with him as his squire, eager to teach him the ways of the righteous warrior. But a large band of brigands ambushed them on the road, shot the knight with the poison dart, and kidnapped his son. They left a note pinned to the ground with a dagger, demanding that the knight plunder the treasury in Orobar and deliver the gold to them. The knight did so, almost dying in the process, but the town guard pursued him from town. When the kidnappers saw the knight coming with the authorities close behind, they killed the poor boy and fled. Upon finding his son's body, the knight swore vengeance upon the bandits and vowed to pursue them into the ends of the world. Unwilling to be taken by the town guard, the knight drew his weapon to resist the arrest. The ensuing fight was a bloody, but, but the knight slew all who came against him. When the fight was over, the knight pursued the bandits deeper into the wood, but the but lost their tracks in the undergrowth. His rage deepened until the bloodthirst and the madness possessed him entirely. Driven insane at the thought of his son's killers escaping unpunished, none would cross the path and live. None shall pass. None would cross the path and live until the bandits had been brought to justice and the tip by the tip of his blade. Uh, eventually, more soldiers had come from Loudwater to capture the insane knight. When they finally did, the old man concludes they hung him in weathercoat wood from a red tree. The old man looks down, but his unfulfilled quest to find his son's killers brought him back as undead. The Death Knight, they call him now, and since then, every few years or so, a boy will go missing. He's looking for a squire, someone to help him on his quest. You take a moment to digest all this information and drink from your tankard. After a while, you thank the old man for the company and the information and are on your way. Go to keep going. It's late when you finally reach Weathercoat Woods, some 55 miles east of Orobar. There are, there on the wood's edge, you camp and let your horse run free. You won't be needing him for a while. Weathercoat Wood is thick and the foliage dense, towering walls green, and in there somewhere of the information you have been have is to be trusted the boy uh, Derek Brumont. You settle down on your bedroll, and embers of your fire keep you warm into the night. After a full day's riding, it doesn't take long for you to fall into a deep slumber, the sound of a nearby river lulling you to sleep. You awake just before dawn, fully rested, but the noise instantly puts you on guard. From somewhere nearby comes a wet, slavering sound. Quietly, you pick up your weapon and move forward stealthily. When you are some hundred feet away or so, whatever is lurking catches your scent, and you hear it running away quickly. Only dim starlight shows any detail, and all you see is a darkened shape moving through the night toward the woods. Do you have a ranged weapon? If so, and you wish to attack it, use shooting. Yes, I do have a ranged weapon, do I not? I have a, a bow. All right, I'm going to shoot it. Go to shoot after. Your target is about 100 feet away. You lift your weapon taking a quick assessment of the conditions and fire. Make a ranged attack at disadvantage at AC 17. Okay, so short bow. And it's at disadvantage, so I got a seven. I would have missed. Uh, Christ, I forgot to mark disadvantage, but I would have missed. Uh, if, you, if your attack hits here, if not, go to miss. I missed. You watch the black shape scurry away back to the cover of the weather coat wood and you curse your poor aim. Then you walk forward to where the creature had been before you started and send it running into the trees. Go to Dead Nelly. You walk forward to where the beast had been before, making all that noise that woke you up. There, twitching in its death throes, is the horse you rode from Orobar. What? Motherfucker. Gritting your teeth and anger, you take out your weapon and quickly put the poor beast out of its misery. The first rays of dawn begin to creep into the sky. What a sigh of resignation! With a sigh of resignation, you wipe the horse's blood from your weapon and begin to trek towards the wood's edge. The morning is peaceful. My horse is dead. Man! God damn it. In contrast to the savagery that you have just witnessed and the chorus of birds greet the dawn, with calls that echo off the low hills and surrounding landscape. As you near Weathercoat Wood and can see down the single path, 
that leads into the depths. You see a little light seems to penetrate in through a canopy. Night still hides beneath the mossy bows and dark green vines that spread the ancient trees together. You step into a path and enter Weathercoat Wood. Who knows what fate awaits you within these shadow depths? Oh, shit. Go to tile page one and then click on this link to go to the entry. Okay. Let's find out what the hell happens. Boom! Let's get going. Move your token onto the bottom grid square of the tile page or place your token on a square adjacent to the tile you have come in from. Okay, so I'm going to go to the bottom. Do, 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 do. I need to get the combat tracker. Okay, everybody calm down. I need to get this organized here. I'm going to make this map a little bit smaller, I think. I'm going to do that kind of a thing. And then I'm going to put my token down here. All right, there's me. Uh, you move ahead deeper into the wood and almost seems as though the trees themselves are watching your progress. Indeed, as you go on, you really do get the feeling you are being watched. Options. You can move with stealth. Uh, okay, so... I am going to move with stealth. So DC 12 stealth check. So my stealth check is a 10. So I fail that. If you succeed, you may add 10 points to any D100 chance rolls you make while on this tile page. Uh, so I don't get to do that. You can check for traps. Roll Perception, DC 12. Yes! If successful, go to Check Success. All right. You search carefully around, but you see nothing to indicate any traps are set here. Return to tile page one and continue from the last direction you read, okay? When you are ready, move your token through the map in the direction you desire. When you reach a square adjoining to the green translucent dot, go to entry quiet entry. But what if I don't want to go to that green dot? What if I want to go to, uh, let's see. When you've finished all encounters, you may move to the edge of the map and onto an adjoining tile page, either two, three, or five. All right, so. All right, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the green thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll fucking check it out. You pause for a second thinking you heard something, but no, it was just some bird flapping out of out of a cover. You watch it rise into the canopy and then look around at the three paths that lead off from here. All right, so what's it going to be? Two, three, or five? What's it going to be? Is anybody in chat have an idea? Are you guys checking this out? Should I go first one to put in the chat? Which way I should go? I'll go that way. If you guys want me to go to two, three, or five, I'll do it. So I'll give it a few seconds here for the delay and see if anybody types anything in. If I don't see anything within, say, 20 seconds, then I will just... Oh, there it is. Three. Okay, I'm doing it. All right, I'm going to go off to the direction of three. And I'm going to choose three right here. And I'm going to bring it up. And let's just... Redo that as well. Let's get that over here like that. Maybe like that. Redo the size like that. All right, so I came from over there. And now I'm here. Place your token on the square adjacent to the tile you just came from. The track leads deeper into the wood and the light fades. Ancient trees line each side of the path. And you can't help but think this wood is an excellent place to hide out. 
Then, ahead of you, you see something strange. It appears to be a low stone building at the corner of the track where the where it turns north. Tucked in amongst the trees is a is it is made soft uh, man. It is made solidly of gray stone, fronted by two large double doors. You move warily forward. Moving with stealth, make a stealth check. DC 13. All right. I got it. Okay. Take note of success or failure. Okay, I am going to take note. I'm going to go right over here to notes. I'm going to make current notes. Current status. Uh, stealth made. And I'm going to hotkey that right down here to there and be able to come back to it if I need it. Okay. Checking for traps. Go to trap check. Uh, yeah, I'll check for traps. You move forward. Alert as you investigate the surroundings. To check for traps in the surrounding forest, go to wood check. To approach and check for traps on the double doors, go to door check. All right, I am going to go to door check. Move your token up to the storm building if it is not already. All right. Boom. You start inspecting the handle and all around the door, looking for booby traps, booby, or traps of any description. Roll perception, DC 14. Should that not be investigation, but I'll do it. I'll do it. Perception. Oh, fuck. If successful, go here. If you fail, go to here. You search around the door, but find nothing trap-like. To try to open the door, do this. To leave and continue north. Oh, no, I'm opening the door. You grasp the metal ring and pull outwards. As you do this, you hear an audible click and then a f Oh. Oh, man. You hear a click and then a f <laughs> Two darts come flying toward you. <laughs> from cleverly concealed holes. Ah, fuck. Roll a d20 plus 8. Oh, snap. A 20. If the result is higher than your AC, yes, then go to dart hit. Oh, my God. Two darts shoot out of a cleverly concealed holes in the surrounding frame of the stone door. Straight at you. You recoil in pain as they pierce your skin. Roll 2d4 and deduct... Oh, my God. Five. Oh, shit. That went a third of my life right there. Oh, no, wait. I didn't do my con, you guys. Oh, no, that... Yeah, I did. So, wait. How many hit points does a rogue have? Is it a d6? No, it's a d8. So, five plus two is... Oh, let's see. So, 8 plus 2. Uh, okay, all right. Just everybody calm down. So, 8 plus a con is 2. So, that's 10 for first level. And then 5, 6, 7. I should have 17 hit points. Should I not? Should I not have 17? I think I should have 17. If I'm wrong in the chat, tell me. Tell me, Mulder. Tell me if I'm wrong. All right, well, I just took 5 damage. Uh... As you quickly tend your wound, you look inside the now open door. Beyond is a dark passageway. Yeah, 17. Okay, good. And some in way inside, you can see the set of stairs leads down. If you wish to enter... Oh, I took the fucking trap. I'm going in. Let's see what the fuck's in here, man. You enter the quiet, cool passage and pad softly down the corridor. Soon you are at the top of a flight of stone stairs looking down. This is presumably you have a source of light. Or dark vision. If you do not have dark vision and you do not have a source of light handy, then your character will know to turn around and leave this place. All right. Uh, I'm going to have to spark up a torch. So I'm going to spark up a torch. And I'm going to go to my inventory and take off a torch. Boom. Spark it up. 
you quietly walk down the stairs, keeping an eye out for anything of the ordinary. Could this be the place where Derek Beaumont is being held? Oh, did I find it already? Did I win? You are. You hold your breath, fearful of making any sound to disturb the deathly air. Still air. Slowly, you descend the bottom of the stairs where your medium-sized chamber lies. You look around for clues as to what the place is used for. As you become accustomed to the light, or rather the lack of it, you notice that the, the far end of the chamber is a large idol made of bronze... Oh, <laughs> you give me the whip, I give you the idol. Oh shit, this is going to be fucked up. You know the, the god well. It is Amon Tur, the sun god, the god of law and justice worshipped throughout Faerun. You also notice cushions lying about the place. What? Is this about to get real? It appears this room was once a monastery of some sort, used by devotees of Amon Tur meditation. Although what it's doing so far out in the wilderness is anyone's guess. Are you a paladin or a cleric? No. Uh, if you roll a d100, if so, you could pray for Amateur for inspiration. Roll a d100 if you score 50 or above, award yourself. Okay, so I can't do that because I'm not. Uh, okay. To inspect the area around the altar here, to have a general search around the room here. To turn around, okay. I'm going to. I'm going to. Ex, ex, ins, I'm going to explore the room. Is what I'm going to do. There are numerous nooks and alcoves around the side of this dusty room. Many hidden from darkness. You search, mindful of traps, but also on the lookout for any items of inference. As you walk, a small puffs of dust rise up, seemingly undisturbed for a long time, years, maybe decades. Make an investigation check. Oh, snap. Investigation. Motherfucker. If you score a 1 to 10... <laughs> uh, you search around the various nooks and crannies, and finally your search turns up something that may be of use. A quarterstaff. You pick it up, and it feels light, easy to wield. You give yourself a couple swings, and it seems to almost be aiding your technique. There is something to this weapon. If you've used stabs before, but this is certainly... No, you've used stabs before, but this is certainly the best of its kind you've ever handled. Indeed, you think it might be imbued with some magic of some kind. Add a quarter staff plus one to your inventory, if you wish. Nice find. Boom. Quarter staff plus one. Boom. Yeah, awesome. Inspired by this find, you think to yourself, there must be more to find around here. You see an item within, within an alcove and reach to grab it, but as you do so, something lashes out at your hand. Ah, Christ. Roll a d20 plus 4. If the result is higher than your AC, then uh, it is not. If it is lower, then go to I entry, bite me. That's funny. You move your hand away just in time, avoiding the bite of whatever it was that attacked you. And then you see what it was. A giant centipede emerges from the shadows, skittering towards you on a multitude of legs. Oh, no. Go to entry centipede battle. Oh, Jesus. Place one token on the map to represent the centipede. Oh, shit. Uh, roll initiative, then do battle with the hideous bug. Spawn its token with within melee range. Okay. So there's the giant centipede. I'm going to roll initiative for all people. Initiative. Roll all initiatives. Ah, oh, shit, he goes first. Fuck me, man. All right, so the uh, he's gonna try to bite me, and he does. Damn it! <laughs> Grab it and run. <laughs> All right, I'm going to. Second wind. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to buy my equipment at the. Uh, let me just take a time out here because. I would have bought an equipment with all my gold. And remember I said I was going to buy a healing potion? Remember? You guys heard me. 
So I am going to do that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I would have probably bought two of them. So let me go to items. Let me go to all. Let me go to healing potion. Potion of healing. I would have bought two of those. And then let me get the potion of healing. Um, whoops, let me get the, uh, the code for the potion of healing. All right, and put that on the actions tab under items. Just in case I am going to get that. And I don't know that I would actually have gotten anything else. I, th I don't think I would have bought any other equipment, just that. All right, so back to what was happening. So now I'm going to attack this bitch. And I'm going to use... Okay, I have a torch in my hand, which means I can only use... Oh, Christ. I better just use my short sword. I'm assuming that's what I have. So, all right. Short sword. Hit! Yes! Damage it. Oh, minimum damage. Boo! He gets to go. Oh, God, he hit me. Oh, my God, it's fucking very bad. I am going to fucking get punked here. I'm going to use my short sword again. Come on, I need a hit. Oh, Jesus, I missed. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, this is bad. Uh, what is my speed? It's only 30. And I don't really know what his speed is. All right, I'm going to bonus action disengage cunning action and move 30 away and let's see what he does oh christ he's got a 30 foot speed so he's gonna come up at me and he's gonna try to bite me please miss jesus fuck i'm down oh no no i'm not i got one hit point oh my god okay i'm going to Drink. Well, I can either try to kill him. So let's see if I. Yeah, I, I think the I think the the strategic thing to do here is drink the potion. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so I drank a potion and got nine. He is going to try to attack me again. And misses. And I'm going to attack him with my short sword. Oh, Christ, I missed. He's going to attack me. Oh, he missed. Oh, my God, I don't want to die. I'm going to attack him again. Oh, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> oh my god. At least I can take a hit now if he hits me. I gotta fucking kill this thing. Come on, man. You gotta be shitting me. Oh, he fumbled. I don't have the tables on. Okay, if I don't hit this time. Thank god. All right, I killed it. Jesus. What's it going to take? Oh, if you are successful, go to entry toast. Add 50 XP. You're goddamn right I am. You absolutely have to know that I am going to add 50 hit points. 
All right. You dispatch the centipede and wipe your weapon clean. There could be more of those things around. You keep a wear, an eye wary as you open, as you move about the chamber. Do you want to search the area around the altar? <laughs> Fuck. Yes. Yes, I do. You walk up to the large bronze idol, and it is exceptionally well made and seems like it was just placed here yesterday. The metal gleams dully as you move around it. Then as you move behind the altar, you see something small lying on the ground, a holy symbol of Amentor. It is on a long steel chain to be worn around the neck and is in the image of a large effulgent sun with runes in the front. This perhaps belonged to a cleric, monk, or paladin. Take the item if you wish, placing it in your backpack. Yeah, I'm going to fucking take it. All right. Let's put it in the backpack. Boom. If you wish to inspect the room, did that. If you wish, if you are done, okay, I'm leaving. You climb the stairs leading from the chamber back towards the dim light of Weathercoat Wood. Soon you are back outside the great stone double doors that led down to the underground temple. Return to tile page three and continue from where you last read off. Okay, so let me let me close all these story entries that I had here. Boom, boom, boom. Close them all. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Close them all. All right. I'm sucking. I've only got, I've only got 13. I've only got four hit points. Uh, when you are ready to move your tokens to the map, okay, good. okay, stone doors. If you would rather keep going in the okay. When you have finished, okay. What did it say? Did it? There was nothing about the green thing. Wasn't there something about the? Oh, here we go. If you would rather keep going, then your character continues around the bend and north. When you reach a square adjoining the green marker, go to round the twist. All right, so I'm going up. And I hope I don't get fucked. Oh, my God. Make a D100 roll and add 10 if you made a successful stealth check earlier, which I did. All right, so I'm going to add 10. Then I'm going to roll a D100. I got a 97. Awesome. If you score an 81 to 110, go to entry garb. You make your way quietly up the path, keeping an eye out for enemies. To your right, something catches your eye, something moving in the trees. You freeze. Hand on your weapon and look closer, squinting through the dense undergrowth. It appears to be a cloak hanging from a branch and moving... What? And moving slightly in the breeze. It is a deep green forest green, easily missed. To inspect the cloak... Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't help it. I have to inspect it. I can't help it. Oh, fuck. Did I get fucked? You make your way in the past slightly primed for any... Movement and walk slowly up to the cloak. Pulling it down from the branch, you turn it over in your hands, inspecting the workmanship. It looks like it belonged to someone about your size, and you place it over your shoulders and try it out. You feel a change come over you. Instantly, you feel more secure, more hidden, even. You have a feeling that this cloak will come in very handy. Add a cloak of protection! Oh, snap! All right. Cloak of protection. you damn right. All right, let's open up the character sheet. Let's put on the Cloak of Protection. Let's go to the library and open up my coding modules for wondrous items. Load it. Let's go to the spell list and find Cloak of Protection. There it is. Let's drag it on as an item.
And let's add the uh, effect to my character. Thank you. Uh, Stone's Endurance. You can focus yourself occasionally shark off energy. When you take damage, you can use your reaction to roll a d12. Add your Constitution Meyer to the number rolled and reduce the damage by that total. After you use this trait, you can't use it for a short or long rest. You know what? I would have done that had I remembered to fucking do it, so I'm going to do it. And then take it away. Uh, uh, uh. Oh! Ah, sneak attack. I can't use sneak attack unless I have advantage. Yeah, Christ. So I can't do a sneak attack unless I get advantage on a roll because I don't have any party members to help me out. All right. Back to what I was doing. Pleased with your new acquisition, you rejoin the path and continue on your way. All right. Excellent. 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 All right. When you have finished in the encounters, you may move to the edge of the map, and I'm going to go up to four. All right. So I'm going to go to four. And I'm going to find tile page four right here. And I'm going to resize that to fit on the screen all nice. Right like that. Right about like that. And then I'm coming up from down there. And let's see what it says. The woods become ever deeper and the sound goes out of the air. There is no birds here. Something has frightened them into silence. Oh, no. It is hard even to tell what time of day it is deep in the forest. Across the path, you see a trail of boot prints. Oh, do you see the boot prints right there? There they are. Uh, leading from the right to the left. They lead back to the forest where it becomes very dense. However, there is no sign of the foliage being disturbed, even through the boot prints, even though the boot prints look relatively fresh. They could have been made as recently as last night. On the track ahead, you can see that this path eventually bends to the right. Uh, and the corner that appears that can be entrance to the cave. Oh, my God. Moving with stealth. Make a stealth check, DC 14, and take note of success or failure. All right. Stealth check. Yes, I... S success... Stealth. Checking for traps? You know what? No. I'm not going to check for traps. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to check for traps. You edge forward warily, checking around the trees above for traps. Who knows what deadly plans the inhabitants of this wood store for hapless travelers. Make a perception check. Okay. I succeeded. Go to free pass. You notice a patch of forest path that looks a bit out of place. Staying back and poking around it with a stick, you can see that someone has dug a pit trap here. Who knows that they? Who knows that they planned? Who knows that they had planned for whatever fell in? Uh, okay. You skirt around the outside of the pit trap and continue on the path. Return to tile page four and continue the direction. Okay. Good. Uh, yes, I'm going to investigate the mossy log. I can't help it. I have to look at everything. I must do it. You walk up to the moss-covered log, and as you near it, you see that it is covered with fungi, bright green mushrooms. You are not sure if you have seen their kind before. Their color... Almost seems phosphorescent, like they would glow even at night. Make a survival roll. Survival. All right, I failed that. If you fail, go to Mungus Fungus. 
Try as you might, you can't seem to recall whether this fungus is poisonous or not. You consider eating a small amount. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But I've heard stories of very dangerous mushrooms. I'm about to get high, y'all, in parts, and think better of it. Oh. I don't eat it. All right. Uh, add the green fungi to your inventory if you wish, and then return. All right, I'm taking the green fungi. I hope it comes in handy later. Inventory, green fungi. Boom. And return to four. Okay. Uh, when you reach a square joining the green marker, go to who knows what. All right, so I'm going to move up. I'm going to go to who knows what. Did you make an earlier trap check on this tile page? If you did, continue reading below. I did make a trap and I failed. As you progress deeper into the warehouse wood, you realize that you are very tired. Time has a mind of its own in this forest. It is evening already. How have the hours passed so quickly? The idea of rest enters your mind, although you know that the area you're in is less ideal for making camp. You should be... You may be disturbed by some wandering creature. There's no way of telling. You may attempt to rest here and recover HD. If you do, if you choose to do so, roll a survival DC 11. Yes, I am going to choose to do that. Survival DC 11. Um... Skills survival. Good lord. If you succeed here, if you fail, go to Night Critters. You make camp just a little off the road, but whether it is because you are tired or simply careless, your camouflage skills don't work well. Your sleep is disturbed several times by animals gnawing at your tent, and once some small creature even tries to make a meal out of your left foot. You sleep reasonably well, but don't regain much energy. Recover half a hit die. Cursing the pesky critters, you break camp and make your way back to the path. Okay, so half a hit die is, I guess, four? And do I lose the hit die? That's not clear. All right, I'm going to give myself four points. And... I guess not lose a die. I don't understand what's supposed to happen there. Somebody actually emailed me that. Oh, that was you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah, you emailed me that. Uh, what did he say? He said to roll your HD. Oh, oh, roll it and cut it in half. Okay, so do roll it. And... Uh, cut it in half. Okay, so that would have been five, and I was down ten, so that means I'm down five still. Okay. All right, good enough. Yeah, I guess uh, recover... What is the exact wording? Recover... The exact wording is... Recover half a hit die. Yeah, so maybe I'm going to... I'm just going to help him out. 181. I'm going to help him out. And I'm going to help everybody who plays this game out by... putting in... 181... Uh... Throw one hit die and recover half result. Or something, may, I'll find a better way to word that. But yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. Yeah, and it, it gave me the con modifier, yeah. One eighty two is just as confusing. Recover one hit die, see the five E rules. 
you make your way. Yeah, that actually that that is that. Uh, yeah, it should say. Uh, it should say. Well, it does say see the five E rule, so that that makes more sense to me. Recover one hit die. If it, if I would have read that, if I was playing and I would have chosen that instead, and it said recover one hit die, I would have just thrown one. That that wouldn't have thrown me off. But the other thing, when he says recover half, it, that's kind of an unusual, usual thing. All right. Anyway, we got we got to that. Okay, so when you finish all the encounters, move to seven or three. Okay. So I'm gonna go to seven. Whoops. Hold on. Ah, oh, crap. I shouldn't have closed that because it had my link on it. All right, no problem. No problem. Because you can just do this. Uh, yeah, what's it called? Uh, t tile page. Tile page seven. Here we go. Boom, right like that. Okay. So tile page seven. And once again, I'm going to adjust the map for the uh, most pleasant viewing of the screen here. And my guy's coming up from the bottom from four. Very good. All right. A river. Let's see. What time is it? Okay, I got five more minutes. Five more minutes. Uh, a river threads through this part of the... This is so cool. All these maps link up, and it's all very cool. Uh, ahead, you see the path bends sharply to the right, and on the north side of the path, it's a rock outcropping in the front of which is the entrance to a cave. Oh, oh, shit. Peering inside from across the river, you see that it extends a long way. Exploring this cave is going to require you to cross a stream, also a busy torrent, about 15 feet wide and rushes from the east to the west, filling the forest with the sound of rushing water. All right. Moving with stealth. Make a stealth check. DC 10. All right. Let's do it. Uh, okay. I failed that. Build stealth. Checking for traps. Go to Trap River. Make a perception check. Perception. My perception sucks. Ooh, I, 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 I made it. If you're successful, go to Hidden Danger. You give the place a thorough visual search, but see nothing that looks suspicious. All right, good. Uh, when you are ready, move your token through the map in the direction you desire. To approach and investigate the stream, in order to get to the cave, go to Cave Stream. Yeah, I'm getting to the cave. Oh, there it is. That's what it looks like. Oh, my God. I don't. I don't like it. <laughs> it's very scary. You peer into the black cave entrance that gapes at you. From the other side of the river. The area around the entrance is interesting. It appears to be surrounded with discarded pottery and other de detritus. De de detritus, I don't know. Perhaps there is a settlement here once. Tribal societies that once roamed this area freely in, in prehistory, and now the cave appears abandoned and its black mouth for forbidding. The stream appears calm, but a glance as it depths tells you. It is moving quite swiftly. It might take a bit of effort to cross. You may take this opportunity to refill your water skin if need be. Are you a paladin? No. To attempt to wade across the stream, may make an athletics check. All right, let's do it. Athletics. Seventeen. If you succeed, go to there. The stream is deeper than it looks and reaches up to your chest as it 
at its deepest part, you lift your pack above your head to keep your provisions dry and push forward several times, slipping on mossy rocks underfoot. But finally, it gets shallower, and soon you are through the worst. You dip your head down and drink deeply of the fresh, cold stream water. I hope nobody peed in it. You feel reinvigorated from your short trip and quenching your thirst. Add one hit point. Okay. Boom. Like that. You plonk down on the opposite bank to catch your breath. You get bearings. You get your bearings as you look back on the shore you came from and then slowly turn to look in the cave. And the entrance shards of broken pottery and other detrivus. Det, det, detrius. A wide cave mouth leads into the long tunnel with the floor of the fine and dusty sand. To go inside the cave, do it. You cautiously step inside the cave entrance, feeling the cool, slightly stale air around you. Go to sub-map 1 after the tile pages in the maps booklet, and then proceed to the sub-map 1 entry in this booklet. Okay. Let's just get everything all ready here. Let's just everybody calm down. Let's all right, everybody. <laughs> Oh, snap. You enter the cave moving slowly within. Your steps raise little puffs of the fine dust as you proceed deeper within the rock. Ahead, you see a tunnel bends to the right. Moving with stealth? Oh, yes. Always with stealth. Always with stealth. Make a stealth check. That is about as huge as failure as you can have. Failed still check. Okay, good. Uh, to check for traps, go to entry tunnel traps. To check for traps, make a perception check. Also a failure. If unsuccessful, go to beyond river. You give the walls and floor a pretty good search, but find no traps. You continue down the tunnel, move within. You move further down the tunnel and the silent passage and the sound of the river fading behind you. The passage turns to the right and continues for some way. Ahead you can see it opens into a cavern. Go to submap 2. All right. And it is the top of the hour. So as I enter this cave, I am going to put a pause on the action and we will continue this next Saturday everybody I'm going to try to get this oh no you can't make that any smaller okay fine whoa no 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 that's not what I wanted I wanted this one instead there we go alright so Five oh one forty. I'm just gonna make a note. I mean, the window will open. Eight oh one forty. Five oh one forty to continue. And that is where I'm gonna leave it. So when I come back next Saturday, I'm gonna pick it up right here, everybody, and you're gonna continue the adventure and see if I don't die so let's go over here uh thanks for watching everybody thanks for hanging out with me i'm going to try and do this every saturday until i run out of adventure and it looks like i got through quite a bit of it so it might only take two or three sessions to do this um i did two hours because i had to build the character maybe on saturday maybe i'll just do an hour that way I can stretch it out an hour at a time, an hour a week until I get through the two adventures. And he said that by the end of March he was going to have the third one done. But I don't know if he's going to make that deadline. I haven't uh, talked to him recently. And then it's going to take me a while to convert it. So I was going to hope hope to keep it going. Um, but we'll see what happens. So that was kind of fun. 
And let me go ahead and for those of you that came to watch and hang out, I will give you the end of stream rewards because that's how I do it. Um, Um, all right, cool. So also as a reminder, guys, uh, these are the ways that you can help out the stream. First one, of course, is coming to Discord to hang out, meet some other people and get to know what's up. Uh, you can go to my Patreon page. I have levels there as little as a dollar. You can subscribe to the channel if you wish. Um, by the way, thanks for all the follows and subs today, guys. Uh, those of you who have Amazon Prime, you know you can subscribe to the channel for free. If you hover your mouse over the uh, video right now, you'll see a little a little blue thing that allows you to subscribe. Uh, you can donate to the channel if you wish. You can also go to the DMs Guild and peruse the items there. Today's DMs... I love you, man. Says, oh, there we go. There we go. There's a sub right there. There's a sub from Mulder. Uh, Mulder8853. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, DMs Guild uh, sales today only four items, so that's a that's not a very good day. But uh, you know anything's good, but usually it does better than that. Uh, also, you guys can uh, subscribe to me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter. Uh, for those of you that might not know, I can't imagine how you wouldn't know, but you might not know. Uh, there's Fantasy Grounds College, which I encourage you to check out. There's the link for that. Uh, this is a group of currently about 1,800 people that are all volunteers uh, who teach Fantasy Grounds uh, classes on character building and combat and GMing and maps and, and uh, all different kinds of stuff. And also, uh, this particular two-week period, the, second, the, the last two weeks in March of 2018, is spring break. And so uh, they've basically turned that Discord into a gathering spot to play any kind of game on Fantasy Grounds. So if you're into D&D uh, &D or Pathfinder or Cthulhu or Savage Worlds or Numenera or Castles and Crusades or, you know, whatever you might be into, uh, all that shit's happening over there. So go check it out. And uh, we will actually be back here uh, tomorrow, Sunday. We will be back here for All Things Fantasy Grounds at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Lay Rune and I will have special guest Chris McDermott, who is the guy from Game Tiles Warehouse who just completed the Meanders 3 Kickstarter. He's going to be on here and talk with us. And he's got a, he has got a product coming into the Smiteworks store, uh, which has 22 maps in it. And we are going to show you what that looks like. And it's pretty awesome, actually. And it's sort of connective like this. 22 maps that you can connect. So like the game I was just playing where you can walk off one edge of it and come on the other edge. There are all 22 of those maps are like that. You can connect them all. So it's really super cool. And we're going to show you that a sneak preview of that uh, tomorrow night. So be here for that. Uh, and then uh, Monday, Module Creation Monday, and then Tuesday, another show. And then on and on Wednesday's game and Thursday. So now I have, now I'm back to my schedule. I have Thursdays off, but now I should have something going every night of the week since we're going to do this on Saturdays. So good times. All right, guys. Uh, appreciate y'all hanging out. Hope it was fun. We'll be back to this game uh, next Saturday. Continue on down the path and see if I die. And uh, until then, good gaming, everyone.